Okay, I'm making this short-ish video about how to use your metronome. It might seem silly, but um, the first time you use it, you might find that it's harder to play your music with it than without it. Um, and that's because using the metronome takes practice, okay? So this will help you with that. First of all, where do you get one? If you don't have a physical one, you can download an app. You can find free ones. You can find fancy ones that do a lot of things that might cost two or three dollars. Or if you go to Google and you just put in the search bar metronome, um, a metronome will pop up on your computer or um, phone or tablet. Let's see. Oh, take a couple minutes to play around with whatever metronome <clears throat> you are going to use just to kind of see how it works what some of the extra features might be. Um, it's just fun to, to play with them. They all have different features, um, like subdivision or tuning or drones. Um, lots of, lo especially the, the newer apps that are gonna cost you a few dollars, they can do a lot. They can even show you like vibrato patterns. Um, first thing, let's practice starting with the metronome. Probably sounds easy. But what you really need to be doing is your brain needs to be engaged before you even take your breath, okay? So let's practice. Find your met, whatever your met is, set it to 80. Um, out loud, let's pretend we're in 4-4 four, four time. So out loud, we're going to count through two measures of 4-4 four, four, and then switch internally to two measures of 4-4. Four, four. So that's four measures total. And then we're going to just play a G. Let's see if we can start right on the mat with that with that technique. So, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. <clears throat> All right, hopefully you did it. Um, that is the bare minimum of what your brain needs to be doing before you come in. What is ideal is to take the next layer of subdivision, which for this tempo would be eighth note. That would be a good subdivision to do. So let's switch now. Instead of counting to the big beat, let's make it subdivided and see what happens. One and two and three and four and two and two and three and four and... Okay, that's really what I want you to be doing before you before you come in, whether you're practicing scales or you're practicing one of your excerpts, okay? Um, eventually, you will be able to transition out of vocal and then mental to just um, <clears throat> to just internally, pre-counting internally. What this allows you to do is ent what we call entering in motion. So you're entering in time with the metronome instead of just, I use the word winging it. You're just winging it. You just come in when you think you need to. Um, and then you realize you're too fast or too, you're too slow and you adjust it in that first measure. Um, or what happens sometimes is we come in with the metronome or don't come in with the metronome. Um, you come in like between clicks and then you just don't know what's going on and you just play your whole excerpt or your whole scale, not even with the click at all. <laughs> I've seen students do that right in front of me. So start with the, uh, the verbal counting, switch to the internal and then play. Eventually, once that is uh, consistent every time, you can just do internal pre-counting and then play. All right. Next thing. I would keep your met somewhere where you can see it when you're practicing, especially if you have one like mine and it actually shows you, well, I guess my light's out over here. I've had this since the 90s. Hmm. So the mine actually shows little lights and you can see the movement of the metronome. So it's nice to have that somewhere where you can see it. Or if you're using an app or your uh, computer or lap uh, laptop, a uh, tablet, you might want to put in, sorry for the extra noise, earbuds. When I use earbuds, which I do sometimes, even with my Met, I sometimes use earplugs or earbuds so it's louder, so I can really hear the Met over my playing. I only use 
the left ear bud and I let my right ear stay open so I can hear my flute. So I would encourage you to try that. Um, a few ways to let the Met subdivide for you. Let's do some math for a second. If the quarter, if you're practicing an excerpt and your quarter note is 60, the next subdivision that we can think about is the eighth note. And if eighth notes go twice as fast as the quarter note, that tempo for the eighth note is twice as fast. So quarter note equals 60 means eighth note equals 120. So if you want the Met to subdivide for you, set it to 120 or whatever the double the speed is that you're practicing. And now every click you hear is an eighth note. One and two and three and four. And instead of hearing the big beat like this, one and two and three and four and. So just doubling the speed, if you're in a four, four or two, four or three, four time or five and seven, four for that one excerpt. Um, similarly with, uh, with a compound meter, like your three, eight, um, excerpt from Mendelssohn, the dotted quarter note is not, you can't just double it. You have to triple it because there's three eighth notes that live in the dotted quarter note. So if you're practicing the Mendelssohn to the measure dotted quarter note equals 44, like I did in that, that video, you would need to triple that to find each click in the measure which in this case would be 132. So you could hear one, two, three, one, two, three, one and two and three and one and two and three and. I'm not gonna try to sing it for you. <laughs> um, that's easier sometimes to play to than the 44, which has so much dead space in between each click. One and two and three and one and two and three and. And two and, three and. So just have the mat subdivide for you. Uh, depending on which one you're using, you might be able to find a feature like mine has that you don't have to do the math. Uh, it just plays the triplets. Let me find it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or if you're doing something in 4-4 four, four and you want to play the eighth note subdivision, you can, whoop, you can set it to eighth notes. One, two. Uh, one and two and three and four and. And mine uh, uses different pitches for the downbeat and the upbeats. Sometimes that messes me up. Sometimes I prefer to have each subdivision the same pitch and that's why I jump the Met to 120 and then the clicks all sound the same. Um, last thing that you could use your metronome for depending on which one you have is for tuning. Um, a really great way to tune with a metronome is to put on the drone. A drone is just a note that is going to be held out infinitely for you to play to. What I like to do for the drone is put in actually both earbuds. And I like to play the note, or whatever the note is of the drone, I play that scale. So that was a C that I just had playing. So I would play the C major scale over that drone. And I put up the volume pretty high so I can really hear it over my playing. And what you'll find, um, especially the higher you go, if the drone is really low and you play really high, what you'll start to hear is like a third note, the note of the drone, the note you are playing, and this third note that's called the resultant tone. And the resultant tone, it's usually the octave or the fifth um, in relation to the notes that you're playing, playing or the drone. Um, but the intonation of the resultant tone is really what tells you if you're in tune. So find a low drone and play some really high notes over it, like long tones. I don't mean like, I tell someone to play long tone and they go like this. Like no, long tone. The point of long tones is to be long so you can listen, okay? Um, Oh, when you hear that resultant tone, feel free to do something like this. And see how that affects the intonation of the resultant tone. And use your ears. Um, you're all very intelligent, I know, because you have a very good band director and you've had um, a pretty decent flute teacher for the past three years. Um, 
Use your ears and listen to the resultant tone for the intonation of that. That will tell you really if you're in tune or not, more so than just trying to match pitch. Okay, that was a little longer than I thought it was going to be, but I hope you find this video worth it. Okay, 